in the studio today talking with Isaac Feeder and actor Haley Joel Osment. Uh, they have just put out a film very recently. It's going to be premiering uh, at the Portland Film Festival on August 26th. Uh, thank you guys for coming. Welcome to Oregon Public Broadcasting. Thank you for having us. Thank you. They're here talking about the film Sex Ed, uh, which uh, can finished shooting recently? Uh, last year, sort of mm -hmm. the, the, the second half of last year. Yeah. Yeah. And tell us what the film Sex Ed is all about. Sure. Uh, sex is a romantic comedy, and Sex Ed stars Haley. And Haley plays uh, a young man who's a recent college graduate who wants to be a teacher. And he finally gets the opportunity uh, to be the supervisor of an after-school activities program, essentially a glorified detention hall. And these precocious middle schoolers, it's clear to Haley's character that they need some form of sexual education. Uh, it's not in their curriculum. So he takes it upon himself to make this detention that. In turn, he falls to the older sister of one of his students. He gets in a little bit of trouble with some of the leaders in the community, and it's really a romantic comedy about becoming a man. Haley, you've done comedy before, but this is kind of a different sort of comedy. It's uh, where you're the leading, leading character. Um, what's different about this film in terms of its comedic structure? Yeah, that, uh, that's, a, that's a great question. Uh, in the past year, I've, I've gotten a, a, amazing opportunities to do uh, a lot of different uh, styles of comedy that I, that I hadn't really had the chance to before. I did uh, sitcoms for a couple years when I was little, but it's, it's different as an adult now, and, and you're right, it's different when uh, you're the lead in a film like this. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I, I think a lot of the comedy comes from Eddie's earnestness and, try, and, and belief that he knows what's right for these and kids. Eddie's a, he's a Eddie, sorry, character. that's my character's name. Yeah, Eddie Cole. Uh, it's, it comes from his sort of sureness that he knows the right way when in reality he doesn't really have himself sorted out and he doesn't really know uh, how to be a man yet. And so the, the, sort of the, the gap between uh, the, the ideal that he has and you know, that he thinks that he can do all these things for the community and what he can actually do is sort of where we get a lot of our laughs. What was so. the toughest thing about this role. Well, Isaac made the, the, the thing that I thought was going to be the, the most difficult aspect of the shoot uh, very easy because we have a lot of children in the cast. Uh, there's that old adage, you never work with dogs or children. Uh, and, and Isaac um, <laughs> proved, proved W.C. Fields wrong. Uh, you know, I'm, I guess I'm a bit of a hypocrite for that because I you know, was, was treated very graciously as a child. But we had a lot of kid actors and very little time to shoot. That We had you know, no, no spare time at all. And he just hired some great, what, the age range from like 10 to 14 or That's something, right. like yeah. terrific actors that it made that part of the film uh, go very smoothly. Now, as you were obviously a child actor for, for a long time, did you have any advice to give to the, to the young actors that you were working with? Was, were you able to help them or mentor them in any kind of way? They didn't really need my, my help, uh, particularly this one uh, little girl who has a scene where she has to, 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 to cry a lot and is very upset. And the one, the one note that we, we both gave her was that, you know, you do the master, you do the wide, then you do close up. So you're shooting the scene for several hours. And we saw her preparing all morning for her big crying scene. And the first take, the big wide take, she was just bawling and crying. Both of us was like, great, 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 but save it, save it. Like, don't, don't do so good yet. Like, save it for your close up. So technical things like that. But no, I was, I was blown away by, by the quality of these actors that we have, you know, and Kevin Hernandez. Um, you know, who, who plays um, the younger brother of my love interest in the, in the film. Like, yeah, the, the cast, top to bottom, was, was extraordinary. So, Isaac, you have directed a, a few shorts mm -hmm. uh, and a documentary, uh, but one thing I, I learned was that you were actually the winner of Coca-Cola's Refreshing Filmmaker Award. Yeah. Uh, and uh, did that do anything for you in terms of your career? How did that help you get to the it, point where you are? It actually, it actually did. Um, it actually did. So what happened, but not in the way that I thought it was going to happen, mm -hmm. which is I was going to go make a big movie afterwards. So what, what, what happened was I made that film, and a friend of mine uh, who was already working in Los Angeles was working at an agency and got really excited about that movie and gave it to whoever he was assisting. Mm -hmm. And she gave me a call, and she was an agent, and she used to work in commercial production as a commercial sales agent. And, and at the time, I decided after college I was going to move to New York City. Mm -hmm. um, I was, I told her I was moving to New York City. She's like, well, there's a company that I want you to check out called HSI Productions, and they're a big commercial and music video production company. And this was still when music videos were like... Still a big of, deal. Yes, absolutely. And um, I got an interview because she made a call to that company, and I thought I was going to interview to go be a 22-year-old commercial director. I got hired to be the intern at the office. <laughs> uh, I then... Actually, it became a job where I became a ghostwriter for 
commercials and uh, music videos. Mm -hmm. There were a few directors in house, incredible talented music video directors, and essentially they would, I would be hanging out with them after I did what I had to do, and I finally one day got the courage to be like, I'd love the opportunity to write for you if you need, because a lot of them do work with other mm -hmm. writers to write their ideas, and it is their idea, but essentially what would happen is I'd get a call at like 11 o'clock at night, uh, from this director being like, we've got a call with the label now. Mm -hmm. Be on the call, listen to my pitch. You've got until the morning to write whatever I'm pitching. Uh, and that's what it would be. I would flesh out that idea. So, <laughs> so would you yeah. say this was like, this is your first major motion picture? That's um, right. So how's that, how's that feeling to you as a director? Are you starting to look at what you might want to do next? Um, how are you feeling For about it? Sure. I mean, it's, it's a dream realized. It was, uh, it was something that took a lot longer than ever anticipated to get the movie made. Uh, I, I first met Bill Kennedy, who wrote the screenplay, uh, back in 2007. Billy and I had developed the story together. He was going to be the writer, I was going to be the director. And then when it got to be in some solid shape is when we found Haley and connected with Haley. This is my first narrative comedy feature, and that's, that's, those are the movies that I want to make. So, yeah, yeah and I am, I, I'm now looking for what I'm going to do next, and yes, that is, you got to be ready. I better come here when we premiere with, you know, with, with that project in hand, or I missed an opportunity, and we know that, so, yeah. So you brought a clip yeah. with us. Uh, just tell us what this clip is all about. Sure, in this clip, uh, it's after school one day, and Haley's character, Eddie, is playing with one of his favorite students. They're playing soccer out in a field, and the older sister of one of his students, uh, her name is Pilar, played by Lorenz Izzo, comes to pick her brother Tito up from school. And this is the first time that Eddie gets the courage to ask her out on a date. Hi. Hey, Pilar. I'm really sorry about the whole thing the other night. <laughs> it's all right. After we cleaned up all the vomit, it was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen someone throw up on my mom, so it was kind of awesome. Yeah, a little too much rum for me, I think. How's Hector? He's a dickhead. Tito, will you give us a sack? He's all right. We're taking a break, actually. He was being a little possessive. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, what are you doing Thursday night? There's, there's this really cool bar underneath my apartment. They do this Afro-Cuban jazz thing on Thursdays. I don't know if you'd want to come. Sounds great. All right. It's a date, then. Yeah. I, I, like, it's a drink. Like an appointment. Like, it's in the books. But I'll, I'll pay for the tab, <laughs> though, so. It's the date, then. Yeah. Haley, what was that scene like for you? Describe what was going on with you in terms of your relationship with Pilar and... I'll, I'll tell you exactly what was going on in that scene. Um, every time we do a, a 15 second take, and throughout this movie I'm, you know, a teacher, so I've got, you know, button down shirt and slacks, and it was like 98 degrees and 99% humidity. It was, it's mid-July in Tampa. So we're doing this sort of very, this is a behind the scenes sort of, we're, we're doing this very sort of, you know, flirtatious scene. And every time they cut, all the wardrobe uh, people and two of the makeup girls with blow dryers would come over <laughs> because it was just you just pour sweat in between these things. So yeah, Lorenza got to wear like short shorts and a, and a tank top, and I'm I'm in my school gear. But yeah, no, Lorenza is a is a terrific actress, and you know, central to this movie is that that she is sort of the person. Uh, for better for worse, that sort of pulls Eddie out of the timidity and sort of gives him the courage to, because he really wants to to give it a shot with this girl. And uh, I think we had a lot of fun sort of developing that chemistry. Speaking of chemistry and developing, you've had a very extensive career in film and television. Uh, and over the last couple of years, 10 years, you've been very, very busy uh, doing some projects that are kind of off the screen, yeah. so to speak, a lot of uh, voiceover work. Um, for uh, video games and uh, some Disney films as well. Yeah. Um, what's that been like, and has, how is that different from traditional roles of you know being in front of the camera? I've I've always enjoyed doing uh, voice work. It really uh, allows you to sort of sharpen your craft because you only have sort of one way to define your character. You can do it all through the voice, and and and, tr and trying to to do that is really. And also with uh, with video games, you know they. 
Uh, Kingdom Hearts 2, the Kingdom Hearts is the main series that I've done. Uh, it's a 90 hour game, so it's a lot of material and it's a big epic story and sort of sustaining that kind of world is, is a, a sort of a cool exercise for an actor. But the main reason I, I did that so much was, you know, that was stuff I could do and also go to college at the same time. Mm. I, was, I was at NYU from 2006 to 2011 doing experimental theater. So that was very, very off screen work. and. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm really glad I did that because now that I'm coming back and doing films and television and everything, having the chance to, number one, work with people my age, which I didn't get to do a lot when I was acting as a kid, and to sort of explore some other things has sort of, uh, you know, allowed me to, to really see clearly what I, what I want out of this business. Yeah. And speaking of films, you've got a spate of them sort of in the can and coming out over the next few years. Yeah. Um, the new Kevin Smith movie, Tusk? That's soon. Yeah, that should be early fall. Yeah, Tusk is really exciting. That's a... A horror comedy uh, with uh, Justin Long and Michael Parks and Genesis Rodriguez, and yeah, that that one's got a lot of fun surprises in it. And then in uh, an Entourage film, yes, uh, yeah, the popular HBO series is uh, going to be debuting as a film sometime in 2015. In a year, yeah, June 15, yeah. Uh, so is so is Sex Ed kind of like the, I wouldn't call it the restarting of your sort of in front of the camera career, but it is sort of like a landmark kind of moment for you in in terms of this film. Uh, where you're sort of out there again as a leading male actor. Absolutely. Uh, being the, the comic lead, I guess, for the first time, it, it's a significant milestone for me. And from a business standpoint, really being on this journey with Isaac and getting it on screen and then getting the chance to, to, you know, to, to do opening night here is, is really rewarding and sort of, sort of allows you to set a course for how to, you know, to go forward from there. So really. speaking of opening night, when uh, on August 26th, um, we'll be here in Portland with the Portland Film Festival. Uh, we've done a little bit of coverage of that in the past. This is the second year of that film festival. Um, what do you guys know about Portland? Have you guys been here before? Uh, I um, did a shoot in Astoria, Oregon once and came through Portland, but really haven't spent time here and I've always wanted to. And Haley, you did some uh, some film work here yeah, earlier in your career. This is the first time I've been uh, in Portland in 14 years. Uh, and I remember it very well. I mean, it's, it, it was a beautiful city then. Uh, a lot has happened since then. It's, its character is now very popular and very well known, you know. So uh, a lot of my friends are from Portland. Uh, but I haven't had the chance to come back until now. So I just wish we were staying longer. Yeah. yeah. We're talking with Haley Joel Osmond and Isaac Feeder. Isaac is the director of the new film Sex Ed, which will be premiering at the Portland Film Festival on August 26th here in Portland. Thank you guys again for being here. Thank you, nice Thank talking you. to you.